Hey guys, Thomas here from Fast Track FBA and today I want to talk about my plans April 2020 and I want to share some of the things that I'm going to be doing and hopefully that's going to give you some ideas that maybe you might want to be doing as well. Stay tuned. Okay guys, so today what I wanna go through is my April 2020 and what I'm gonna be doing. So if I give you a quick understanding of what I'm gonna go through, and then obviously I'll go into each section in a bit more detail. Number one, coronavirus. Can't not talk about it, it's having a real impact. Number two, I'm gonna be talking about FBA fee changes. Number three, I've got a new VA, how I'm gonna make sure that they add real value to my business and also I support them. Number four, I'm gonna be looking at Amazon Netherlands because I think that's gonna have a real impact and a real opportunity there. And then finally, number five, I'm looking at how I'm automating my repricing. And there's a cool thing that I'm doing this month, which hopefully you might like and might wanna do as well. I wanna talk about coronavirus. Well, actually I don't. I really don't wanna talk about coronavirus. It's all that people are talking about right now. And to be honest, I understand why, like I'm out here in Vietnam, I can only tell you what I see remotely. I'm okay, there's no problems in Vietnam, they've got it really under control. But I'm not a big fan of talking about the, the hype or what's going on. But interesting enough, it's having a real impact upon operations. So it's having everything, you know, affecting everything from purchasing. So a lot of the stock we buy is grocery suppliers. You know, you're thinking like Tesco's, Ocado, uh, Asda. It's really impacting what we can buy. Number one, it's limiting what we can buy. Number two, even people like Ocado, they've got weights on their websites. I've seen, you know, I've seen you're in a virtual queue. You are, right, you know, number 10,000. You're like, what? 10,000 people are in this queue, this is crazy. And now even when I see the cardo, they put on the website, we are gonna be down for a few days, we're not taking any new orders. Not only that, you can't even get shipments, you can't even get baskets created. And the problem comes is that also as well, the delivery companies short deliver. So it's been a real impact on that. But one thing which I just point out to everyone is there are always gonna be areas that you can focus on. There's gonna be something you can look at. There are gonna be opportunities that you're not even thinking about. So yes, everyone's looking at the essentials, but what you might be missing out is there could be a really good sale on something which is gonna sell the moment Corona starts calming down. So just keep an open mind. Don't get too focused on, oh my God, I want to be buying all the, the items that I can sell right now. There are there are gonna be good opportunities to buy some other deals. Because hey, you know what? A lot of sellers are, a lot of stores are just, right now, they've got no footfall. They're gonna run sales. They're gonna have people available to buy things. So keep an open mind. You focus on your business and try and spot opportunities. That's what we do in arbitrage. We're spotting opportunities that maybe other people are missing. So yes, the demand right now is for groceries and all those health, healthcare and essential items, but there might be other things out there. So top tip, keep an open mind. But if you don't know, and I'll just share it quickly now, Corona, in regards to around Corona, it's had an impact upon shipments. Amazon is limiting massively what shipments we can send in. Um, and even to the point in America whereby someone got Corona in New York and they've shut down one of the fulfillment centers. So that could have a real impact in the UK. But just in regards to shipments, if you don't know, you can still send in shipments. But at this, at this time, it may change. You know, everything's changing all the time. But if you want to know the categories they're allowing in are things like baby products, health and household, beauty and personal care, and that's including personal care appliances, uh, grocery, industry and scientific, and then finally pet supplies. But anything in those categories that's generally working well. And interesting enough, another top tip we did find, might have changed by the time we released this, is the fact that if you put in one of those, should we say, required items, you know, like personal care into your shipment first, you can then add in other items which are no longer required but that may change. So keep yourself up to date. The situation is always fluid. So that's a little bit about Corona and I'm gonna be watching that and talking to my teams regularly about what can we do, how can we source. The other thing which I'll probably just highlight is a lot of people are finding deals. They're not really deals. They are, the price has historically been 16, 17 pound. Today it's gone 24 because it's sold out. And you know what, if you can send it in, yeah, you might sell it for that, but it isn't a deal. It's, it's a recent price spike because of the current market volatility, because of this, what's going on. So my advice to you is 
always check Keeper, do your analysis on Keeper and just make sure that what you're buying is actually a genuinely good deal. Don't go and buy it because it's recently spiked because, hey, you know what? Number one, the price could come back down. Number two, Amazon's going to come along and say you're price gouging, take the stock down, take the listing down or even suspend you, or even potentially stop you from selling on Amazon completely. So play fair, do a good job, be a good seller, but just be mindful that we're still trying to find deals that are genuine deals. We're not trying to take advantage too much of massive price increases, my price increases. So yeah, that's a little bit about Corona. What I'm also gonna be doing in April 2020 is looking at my Amazon FBA fees. Now, if you don't know, what I'll do is I'll drop a link to a video up here that I've done about the FBA fee changes and how they're affecting, because they're quite substantial in some of them and they're gonna have a real impact. So number one, I'm just gonna be looking at my pricing. If you want to know, I actually set a min max at every single product based on the actual fees. I wanna make sure I'm getting my ROI down to the penny and I do that, so I need to make sure I've got the correct fees. So I'm gonna be updating all those fees. And also as well, I'm just gonna have a look through and try and understand, you know, maybe is there products that are aren't going to be profitable anymore that we've got in the inventory already that I want to maybe get sold through beforehand or you know what I just need to get sold a lot of people kind of sit there and say oh I might wait a couple of months to get my ROI but you know what with the fee changes that's going to have a real impact so it might just be worth dropping the price getting it done before if I get this out beforehand or get it done as quick as possible because you know what after the storage fees for a couple of months just doesn't add value so Top tip there, look at your FBA fees or ENF fees, see if your products that you've currently got in stock are still gonna be profitable. And if not, just get rid of them, clear them down, go get other items. My third thing that I'm talking about is I've recently hired a new member of staff into my company. Now, if you don't know, I run the Fast Tracker FBA Academy. We hire and train a series of VAs and we've been really successful at it actually. Um, I'll drop a link down below to that and also I'll drop a link up above about where a video that I did about how you can hire your own VA from onlinejobs.ph. Really useful, has some really positive feedback from that if you are interested in it. But the one thing which you know I've learned very much, having a VA takes your business from being self-employed to being a business. And for me, that's super, super important. And the other top thing, which I've really learned, the clients who support their VAs get the most out of them. The clients who talk to their VAs get to know them on a, um, a local level or get to know them on a personal level, they're the ones where the VAs work longer hours, they find more deals, they get up to speed quicker. They just have a much better relationship. But you know what? The VA adds so much value to the business from the get-go. And it's super, super important to do that, but also as well, make sure that you're supporting your team members. So for me this month, with my new member of staff, I'm gonna make sure that I'm just gonna be monitoring their deals, I'm gonna be seeing what's going on, and I'm gonna expect them to have some bad times. And I'm gonna have conversations with them quite regularly to see, hey, how are you getting on? What's going on, you know, family, how's life at home, personal interaction, but also how are you getting on at work? Are there any training that I need to do? Do we need to spend some quality time together? And actually just making sure that I get her up to speed as soon as possible. So that's gonna be one of the third things that I'm doing in April, supporting my new VA in my business. Okay, so the fourth thing I'm gonna be doing in my Amazon business in April 2020 is looking at Amazon Netherlands. Now, I think this is a real opportunity to grow. I know sellers who are doing massive volumes in Europe, and you know what? There are five marketplaces only a couple of months ago, now there are six and it's really simple to go to. So first things first, what I've done, and I will drop a link back up there for you, is I've changed my fulfillment options on Amazon, my fulfillment fee, sorry. Now the default fulfillment fee from Amazon is about, I think they do a 63p uplift on the UK prices, which is crazy. You know, it's like, this is, I'm not gonna be able to cover these costs. I'm gonna lose money by selling on Amazon Netherlands. So the video I dropped up there, that's gonna just show you how to change that. And that's under global listing. But number two, also as well, I'm going to make sure my listings are on Amazon Netherlands and I'm going to be making sure that my pricing is competitive. Now, one thing I have done is I've spoken to Repricer Express and they're the repricer that I use in my business. I'll drop a link down below. And also as well, they have a beta test for Amazon Netherlands. So I'm going to ask myself, or I've asked them already, can I get on that the moment it comes out? Because I would just want to make sure that my prices is you know, not just competitive, but we're repricing and making sure we're getting on top of that. So contacting Repricer Express, done that already, getting on the beta test for repricing Amazon Netherlands, and then trying to drive sales in this new marketplace. So number four, Amazon Netherlands, getting sales there.
Number five, and my final thing I'm going to be doing in April 2020, is very much based around trying to drive automation. I'm a big, big believer in systems. It helps me scale. It helps me you know, get my time back, really. That's it. So Repricer Express, I've done some research, and I found out that they have the ability to upload, or you basically put a, P, a CSV file onto an FTP server. This is whereby you upload a CSV file onto a, a web server, and then Reprice Express will go grab that and upload it into their database, and obviously they'll update the pricing. Now, you might ask, hey, why do I want to do this? Why do I care? Well, interesting enough, in my business, I'm, I'm getting new lines in, I'm losing lines, but because I'm getting new lines in all the time, let's say every week I've got 20 new products coming in because, hey, we're doing arbitrage, there might be 20 new deals or 20 new products I've never sold before, I've got to be updating that Reprice Express. Now, one of the big problems I have right now is not only adding in new products, but also as well whereby my products are, should we say, Maybe they've been on Reprice Express for a while, you know, like two, three weeks, and they haven't really got any sales. I actually monitor this on my local side with my, through my database. And if I don't have any sales after X number of days, I start changing the rules, and I also start changing the minimums. So I might go like 20% minimum, 0% minimum, and then even below zero into a loss making just to get sales on that product. Because the one thing I understand in my business is that, hey, if I'm not selling the product, I'm not making anything. It's just dead stock. And for me, I want to turn that volume, I want to be moving it. So having something like Repricer Express, whereby what they're able to do is I can write a script and hey, if you don't know, I like to code, I do a lot of coding myself. I can literally have a, a really easy script that will just download from my database, get the minimum for each individual product that I've got and create a maximum, a nice CSV file download that, upload it to the FTP server, and it can do that every hour. I can write a, a cron job to make that happen. That's a timed job that can happen. And then finally, what will happen is Repricer Express will pick that up and then obviously upload it into the database and my products will get repricing. Now, if you want to know right now, we currently do that whole process, but we do it with a VA. She will literally come in once a day, download Repricer Express, upload it to a, an Excel sheet, create a new sheet, download it, and then upload it to Repricer Express, which is okay. It's not, you know, not particularly efficient, but it probably takes a 10 minutes a day, maybe five minutes a day. And I'm just thinking, you know what, five minutes a day over the course of five days a week, not including weekends, that's what, half an hour? That's half an hour of time I now have my VA to go do something else. And it's, it's a really simple thing. And if I can automate it now, what I'm also going to get is it's going to happen on weekends, it's going to happen on days off. It's just going to happen. And the one thing I'm a really big believer of is VAs are great and I love them, but if you can automate it, automation is the way forward. They don't go sick, you don't have problems with them, it just works. I love it. So automate, automate, automate. So for me, fifth and final thing I'm going to be doing is writing a script to download all my SKUs and a minimum max pricing file, which can then be automatically uploaded through FTP to Repricer Express's web servers and update my Repricer Express um, repricer without even having to touch it. So in theory, now all my repricing will be completely automatic. And I'll probably just check it maybe once a week to see sales and what's not moving and then see if there's anything I need to do. But yeah, number five, automating Repricer Express through scripting. Right guys, hopefully you found that interesting. And hey, look, I haven't done these for a while and I've just been so caught up that actually I quite like doing them. It got my head together or what my plans were, what I'm gonna be doing in the month ahead. And I like to share that back with the community and hey, here's what I'm doing. So if you like that, give me a good thumbs up. It just lets me know you like this content and obviously I'll do more of them. Also, I'll ask you the question, what are you doing in April, 2020? Drop it down below, maybe top three things. You know, if you have a goal, a direction, and you write down what you're gonna do, then hey, you're probably gonna get there. So drop down your top three things down below. But what I will also say is if maybe you're growing your Amazon business and you wanna know more, be sure to click the subscribe button. That is gonna notify you the moment any new video comes out. But what I will say is for me, Thomas Parkinson, Fast Track FBA, thank you very much.